Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at the Highlander Summit Signature Event, checking out 62880A title coming in from New York. This is their first event that they're playing in this year, and they got a really cool robot that they uh, brought to this one. Watched it compete a couple times, looking really cool in the field. I think this tray mechanism is so cool, so I can't wait to dive more into that and how they're going uh, high and low and scoring all over the place for that. A couple great features for defense as well, too, that we'll talk about. Love their aligner. They have their custom format that they do on the back of it. A lot of great stuff with intake and how they program as well, too. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. William, let's dive into this robot here. I'd love to hear more about some of the design methodology behind it, uh, why you chose this robot, and if you're happy with your design so far. Uh, so, when designing our robot, we, uh, we realized that the long goals were really important to score points as they gave a control bonus of uh, ten, 10 points. So, so to, in order to capitalize, capitalize on it, we decided to make our robot uh, fast, fast and maneuverable uh, uh, around the long goals. So, in order to do that, we, allowed our uh, we gave our robot the ability to have a tray that can move up and down, which could uh, allow it to move under the long goal, which means we could defend it easier. Uh, we also gave our robot the ability to uh, have a front and back intake, which means we could uh, just drive into the loader and just back right into the long goal. Can you just talk to me about some of your building process that you went through? Like, what were some of the challenges and maybe some of the, the uh, successes you had while building this iteration of robot? Uh, some of the challenges we had was that it was like the ball would kept like the ball would jam here. So, like in order to fix that, we added like the zip ties, as you can see here. Let's pass over to Miles, talk more about the uh, intake. You know, we talk about bringing in the uh, blocks in here. It can always be a challenge for it. Let's talk more about what your design is and anything else you want to dive more into it. Okay, yeah. So for our front intake, we decided in order to be fast, we need to be light. So instead of having other separate scraper mechanisms, we decided to integrate our entire front intake into both for ground intaking. So uh, Mason will demonstrate here. All right, good. Now you can outtake. And then for a mash loading stage, you can, yep which is powered by these two pistons here, which can also help that help wedge it itself into the mash loader and then intake blocks. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, so, you can lift it back up. So, one challenge we ran into, into while we were building this intake was that the pistons were originally fixed to a single point. So, every time a block went in, the, blo the whole robot would lift up. So, to compensate for this, we made these two little mechanisms here which essentially are attached to the piston, which when lift, the intake is lifted up, moves up with it. So this makes it, helps with the easier intaking. So you can intake again. It just jumps up a little bit, doesn't really make the bot jump up. So looking at this on here, if we pass over to Mason, we talked to some of the uh, the abilities to pick it up. How about from a code standpoint? What uh, what went into it from that aspect of it? Do you have any macros you go through or any uh, different uh, types that you want to talk about when you went to uh, doing the code? Um, so basically, we wanted to make our conveyor and our intake spin at the same time with a button. However, when we were match loading into here, we realized that before, the ramp and the front intake were spinning in the directions that we didn't want. So to do this, we took the truth value on a boolean value of these pistons, and when it was activated, the front intake would spin in an opposite direction. So right now, it's spinning clockwise, but when you bring the intake back up, it spins counterclockwise. So that's pretty much how we coded our front intake and ramp to intake blocks as efficiently as we can. Looking past this event, are there any other aspects of automation that you want to do on this robot for like a future event? Oh yeah, um, one feature of our robot is that when we need a double park, we can use our front intake to bring a block up, and then sorry, you go here, and it can lift itself up over the park zone, so. Maybe in the future, we want to add some sort of sensor. So when it detects a block towards the end of the game, it'll macro and lift the intake down. 
Aaron, we gotta talk about the tray that's on this robot here. I mean, overall, I just love this design that you've been able to get so compact with this and just overall the way it's worked. You, when you're talking to me before, you mentioned it's kind of almost like a separate like piece of what you have from the rest of your robot too. So can you, can you just walk me through how this all works? Yeah, so basically we are, uh, this whole thing is based on the fact that we need to fit under the long goal, right? So what we did, instead of having overhead rollers, uh, we instead use underhead treads which act, which actually uh, act on this, these, the friction of these bands, which are really pliable, which really helps with like the smoothness and the overall like speed and efficiency of it. And also, we, this whole thing is like this big tray that gets funneled in by plastic at the end. Uh, yeah, there's also two uh, different parts of this. We have this uh, ceiling, and we have this tray. So these are actually like different parts. So as you can see, can you turn off the code? Yeah, so this part is like completely different from this part and it's at the end, it's like stopped by this piece of plastic right here. And essentially what this helps us do is that when the blocks move up, they actually, they, they don't like stay like tension at this, at the, uh, they, they don't like stay exactly the same tension, you know? Uh, so it really helps uh, with our efficiency with uh, scoring. And you also notice that we actually have two motors powering this uh, tray. So we have the motor for the first part, and we have this final motor uh, right here at the top, as you can see. So this helps us because uh, the box can like stay there and they don't come out. Yeah, uh, that's basically it. As you see how it goes up, and it stops by the separate motors. And now when we activate the second motor, it comes out. Yeah, it's basically it. A couple other key aspects to talk about on this robot here is the uh, indexer. So uh, let's pass it back over to Miles to talk more about uh, how that indexer is working or anything else you want to add into that. So similarly to what Aaron said, uh, we have two motors for intaking. One for the ramp here, so if you could run that. And one for the indexer. So some problems we went into this was because the, the, the compactness. We, could ha we couldn't really figure out how to get this system entirely and this is the end We eventually figured out that by having this shaft spin independently of this, because the sprocket on the upper uh, tray ramp, right, it's on a brass insert or a round insert, and it's on spinning on a shaft. So this spins independently on that shaft without powering this one. So this is geared up to uh, here. So there's like a, some little small chain in here. And then it spins this and it spins the ramp. Now, uh, the motor powering the uh, tray is a uh, 11 watt, and the motor powering the indexer is a 5.5 watt. Uh, or we had two actual 5.5 watts on the front intake. However, to get around the 88 watt limit, we had to remove one and then put it on here instead. So, as again, so the indexer it spins on a separate shaft and it's just chained up so that it allows for easier, less. Um, Easiest, less troublesome uh, and ticking. Yeah, less jams and everything that goes into that too, right? So uh, last thing I want to wrap up with, this is this custom aligner that you have. And like, can we spin the robot around? I'd love to just take a little bit more into this. Uh, obviously been working out great for you. Uh, so Mason, let's wrap up, talk more about uh, what's gone into uh, the construction of this. So we didn't really want to use too much metal for the aligner because me using metal wasn't very like customizable. So to solve this, we took the shape of an aligner and use a six inch standoff. And using a PVC pipe and a vise, we bent the six inch standoff in order to accommodate for the shape that we wanted. And if we wanted it to jut out more or in, we could change the amount of spacing on here. And high strength space, we use high strength spacers so that the standoff wouldn't get too damaged and it'll easily roll along here. And to help support the impact of the aligner when, it, when the robot goes into the aligner, it's a triangular shape, allows it to spread evenly across the whole back of the robot, which is supported by half cuts going right here and ball bearings to help align the robot into the triangular shape of the long goal properly. Well, title overall, this is a great, uh, awesome uh, implementation of this game so far for pushbacks. So we wish you best of luck here at Highlander. I know you got a field of events uh, definitely coming up in the season two. We can't wait to see that continuing iteration process all the way through. Thanks for taking the time to tell us more about this and good luck the rest of the way. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.